Marvel 2-in-1 issue 58 contains the final chapter of the Project Pegasus saga. Ben Grimm, Quasar, and Giant Man have all been taken out by Claw, and now he's ready to finish the thing off once and for all. The Claw should have learned by now that actions are louder than words. His grandstanding cost him his moment of revenge. The lights begin to dim. Suddenly his sound claw stops responding to his demands. His body begins to shake apart. The claw is forced back into his prosthetic. Benjamin Grin comes to and looks up in shock. Wandar has changed. He's in a new uniform and talks as though he no longer has the mind of a child. Wandar informs Ben that he no longer goes by the name of Wandar because he has been reborn. He once again tells the story of his being overwhelmed by the Cosmic Cube, which put him into a regressive coma for months. Wondar tells Ben that he's a changed man, reborn as the living son of the Cosmic Cube, and that from now on he wants to be called the Aquarian after his native star system. His personal goal is to bring the peace he has found to the world. As the two stand side by side, Ben can feel his strength being sapped from his body and asks the Aquarian if he can control his power. The Aquarian lets him know that his null field is forever a part of him and can't be turned off. Ben and the Aquarian head towards the infirmary. Every time I read this panel, I'm shocked by Ben's horrible idea to send the guards back to the compound by themselves. The likelihood of Solaire waking up or Claw re-emerging from his sound claw is just too high. It's as though he learned nothing from the previous issue. Giant Man and Quasar are dropped off at the infirmary. After leaving the infirmary, the Aquarian informs Ben of a local distortion in the cosmic fabric. A few minutes later, they come upon an area in the main silo where the walls are buckling in and metal is getting sucked inside. The shock of what he sees nearly causes Ben to fall into the man-shaped hole that used to be Thomas Leitner. He greets them, calling himself the Nth Man. He claims to be a living space warp, a sentient singularity, drawing matter and energy into the infinite dimensions of his own form. Oh, and of course he's still planning on destroying Project Pegasus. The more he pulls in, the more he continues to grow. And finally, after six issues, we're given the villain's exposition and told what the hell is going on around here. We learn that after Dr. Blake healed Black Sun and turned him into Thomas Leitner, that he was contacted by the mysterious Nth Command, who wanted a monopoly on all energy research. Dr. Leitner was hired to destroy the project from within. To do this, the plan was to use the Nth Projector, a device used to open portals into other dimensions, to teleport Project Pegasus out of the Earth-616 universe. But first, Dr. Leitner wanted to use the device to restore himself to Black Sun, but it made him far more powerful than he ever imagined. He was transformed into an interdimensional vortex who had gained the Nth power. Ben gets the idea that he can stop the Nth Man like the little Dutch boy who stuck his finger in a dike. This makes no sense whatsoever as the little Dutch boy in the story places himself at great peril and had to wait on others to come and help so that the leak could be sealed. Ben pulls a large pillar out of the floor and hurls it at the Nth Man. What happens next is exactly what you think would happen. The Nth Man absorbs the pillar and grows larger. The Aquarian steps up to the bat, offering to see if his powers can perhaps negate those of the Nth Man. We also learn in these panels that the Aquarian has the ability to cancel out gravity around him and uses his power to fly. The Aquarian focuses and expands the radius of his null field. As the Aquarian's powers expand outward, everything at Project Pegasus begins to lose power. Everything shuts down. One of the funnier lines here is the guy who informs everybody else that the guns won't work. Why was he trying to fire the gun? Another issue I have is that the Aquarian's powers also work against kinetic energy. Everybody should be fallen to the floor, afraid for their lives as their hearts stop. As the power to Thunder's room shuts down, she decides to leave her cage. What about all the bad guys at the compound? Why, why don't any of them escape? Anyways, comic books, right? The Aquarian's power expands until it reaches the entire project, cutting off the air filtration system. At once, people begin to choke and collapse. Why? There should have been enough oxygen to last a little while, I would think. The Nth Man begins to shrink, but the Aquarian picks up on the stress from his companion. Rather than risking killing Ben, the Aquarian pulls his null field back into his body. The Nth Man mocks him in his inability to contain his power. The Aquarian knows otherwise. As soon as the lights come up in the infirmary, Quasar gets up to investigate. Janine tries to stop him, but Giant Man insists that the two of them have work to do. 
Giant Man is impressed by Quasar's dedication. As the two of them close in on the Nth Man, they run across Ben, who warns them that he doesn't think Quasar's wristbands will do any good. He may be right as the Nth Man seems eager to consume Quasar's energy. The team backs off and Thundra arrives to help out. Ben lets it be known that she helped create this mess, and Ben tells everybody what they learned from the Nth Man. Quasar isn't very happy about the news, and lets Thundra know that now that they no longer need a confession, she can look forward to prosecution. Ben, who had threatened her with the same thing last issue, acts like Quasar is being too tough on her. The Aquarian Giant Man get the group refocused on the task at hand. Everybody wants to try and be the hero, as they all volunteer about who should go in and try to stop the Nth Man. Quasar as head of security is the first to step up to the plate and blast the Nth Man. All Quasar's energy blasts do is feed the beast that was Dr. Leitner. We're also told that the danger that the Nth Man poses is far greater than it initially appeared. The Nth Man claims to exist on all levels of the multiverse. The strain becomes too great and Quasar temporarily blacks out. Ben catches Quasar and the team sits around for a moment, pondering what to do next. Giant Man offers to try and enter the Nth Man and expand himself to the point where maybe he can cut the Nth Man off from this dimensional plane. Quasar warns him that he might get killed, but Giant Man insists that he's already a dead man walking and drops the bombshell that he's dying of radiation poisoning from his fight with Atom Smasher. As the door between our heroes and the Nth Man collapses, Giant Man rushes ahead intent on making a difference before he dies. His friends try to stop him, but it's too late. Giant Man disappears into the void of the Nth Man, and just like everything else that they've thrown at him, it doesn't do any good. The Aquarian claims he knows of a way that they can rescue Giant Man and stop the Nth Man. He wants all of them to form a chain of living links, allowing him to enter the Nth Man and hopefully retrieve Giant Man. We're then given a very sweet and somewhat awkward panel, where the Aquarian lets Ben know that he loves Ben as deeply as any man could ever love another. The Aquarian dives into the Nth Man, and I'm glad to see that the writers took a moment to address the fact that Ben's grip is weakened, but remains firm enough to confidently hold the Aquarian's wrist. And holy shit, everything inside the Nth Man is crazy. You know things have taken a turn towards the cosmic once we start getting panels like these. The years the Aquarian spent growing up alone inside of his ship have tempered him for this moment. Giant Man floats in the middle of it all. His sanity is slipping. The Aquarian calls for Dr. Foster to reach out to him. As the two men come together, Dr. Foster's sanity is saved, and the Aquarian begins to push his null field outward once again. Outside of the Nth Man, each of our heroes struggles to maintain their grip. Myron attempts to evacuate, but Janine tells him that they've already run out of time. The Aquarian's power expands to the point where it finally negates the Nth Man's consuming energies. The Nth Man collapses back into himself, severing himself from reality and leaving our heroes behind. Everybody rejoices as the news of our hero's success spreads. All but one rejoices, that is. Quasar reflects on what Leitner said about his existing on all levels of the universe, and is afraid that he's still out there somewhere, possibly in a universe where no Wandar exists to stop him. Afterward, Ben informs everybody that he needs to get back to the Fantastic Four. He wishes Dr. Foster the best of luck in searching for a cure. The Aquarian also seems to be on his way, as he thanks Janine for her care over the last couple months, and gives Ben a warm embrace goodbye. Ben wants to know what the Aquarian's plans are moving forward. The Aquarian doubles down on his commitment to bring peace to mankind. Quasar announces that all charges against Thundra will be dropped in her help for defeating the Nth Man, and he offers her the opportunity to try and find out who is really behind the events of the Project Pegasus saga. Thunder happily agrees to look into those who hired her. The story wraps up in a shadowy boardroom, where once again we find the mysterious smoking man. We discover that there are other Nth Projectors, and that the loss of operatives doesn't affect their overall plan to gain a world energy monopoly. In the final panel, we're shown that it's the Roxxon Corporation that has been pulling the strings all along. The smoking man remains a mystery, and promises that soon they will have the power to accomplish much, much more. I'll continue this storyline in my Project Pegasus playlist, picking up in Marvel 2 and 1, issue 67. As for what happened to Dr. Leitner, watch for my upcoming series on Squadron Supreme. Thanks for watching. Feel free to hit any of the buttons below. I'm out.